in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. There is no other God like you. No. No. Father, we praise you, we worship you, yes. we adore thank you. you. Thank you, thank you. We invite your yes. presence in this place. Yes. Yes. Holy Spirit, fall afresh upon us. Oh, God. Yes. Open up our eyes of understanding yes. to receive the yes. unadulterated uh, yes. word of the gospel yes. of Jesus Christ. Yes. Bless each heart here, Father, each yes. representative of their household, yes, Lord. that today will be a day unlike any other day, yes. that we may came in one way, but we will leave in a different manner. Yes. Yes. With the refreshing of our hearts and yes. minds, yes. with the renewed look of who Jesus really is. Yes. Yes. So thank you, Father. Thank you. I decrease, uh -huh. and you increase. Yes. Yes. Teach your people, Teach. Father, through me. I'm just your vessel. Thank you, Jesus. And I pray what I say will land on hearts that are good soul. Yes, ready to embrace. Yes. Ready to see your truth and reveal yes. of yes. Jesus Christ. The revelation yes, yes. of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, saints. It's just so good to be here in the house of the Lord yeah. and have this opportunity to share the word of God. Mm -hmm. um, I pray that it would be received on good ground, that your heart is willing because it is the word. Yeah. It is yeah. nothing that I made up in anything that's coming from my mm -hmm. old flesh. It's not coming from nowhere but the word and the spirit of God. Yeah. And I pray that we will be really, really receptive in receiving it. I know one thing about um, about what we believe is powerful. Yeah. It, it changes a lot of things. Yeah. If we have the wrong type of belief, guess what? It causes your life to kind of go in a certain way. Yeah. And if you have the right kind of belief, mm -hmm. then your life will line up according to the scriptures. Yeah. So what you believe is powerful. How and what you hear is powerful. Yeah. So it all starts with how we view the power of the cross. I know that I say this over and over, but I know faith comes by hearing mm -hmm. and hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. And the power of the cross is something we really need to embrace. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Is Jesus' death, 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 resurrection, I mean his death, burial, and resurrection, uh -huh. does it supersede or is it greater than the fall of Adam? And anybody answer? It's greater. It's greater. Mm -hmm. But we say it's greater, but we still kind of live like Jesus' uh, death, burial, and resurrection was not powerful to wipe away our sins. Yeah, right. Because we still have a fear that we are not totally forgiven. Mm -hmm. So when we have that fear, we are putting Adam's sin above what Jesus have done. Oh, and we need to change that around yeah. because when we can change that around, we'll begin to see a difference in the way we talk and how we live because yeah. our belief no longer has Adam greater mm -hmm. than what Jesus did. That's right. But many of us still believe that the sin of Adam is greater than what the obedience now. Yeah. Jesus obeyed. Yeah. Adam disobeyed. Yeah. Right. But because of his disobedience, guess what? Adam's disobedience made us sinners. Mm -hmm. We didn't come here sinners. But because he disobeyed, that curse fell upon us, which caused us to become sinners. Mm -hmm. Okay? No. Now, we got to understand, because of his disobedience, this is who we became now we have a second Adam. That's right. Jesus. The second Adam 
was greater than the first Adam. And the second Adam made us righteous because of what? Obedience. He obeyed. And because he obeyed, it supersedes, over Trump. We cannot, as believers and leaders of this church, begin to cause people to begin to just think about sin. We need to change their focus to the obedience of Jesus Christ, the power of the cross. Because when we are sin conscious, sin conscious then has more dominance over the power of Jesus Christ. And we can shout hallelujah everything, but when we are talking more sin consciousness, then we are putting and saying, Jesus, what you did wasn't good enough. You didn't do it right. But yet God accepted it. And then by God accepting it, then it is right. And that's what we need to accept. Um, I know that when God gave Moses the written law. What was that written law? The Ten Commandments. Handwritten by God personally. And those Ten Commandments were given to show that man could not keep this law in order to be blessed. He could not keep it. The law became a stumbling block for man. Because if we broke one, all of them was broken. So that pristine law of God is so perfect, it can't bend. You know, the law cannot bend. So when the law can't bend at all, then God had to make a way for that law to still be fulfilled without me removing it. Because man couldn't do it. And the temporary sacrifices did not do it either because they came from animals. Right. So it was only temporal. Yeah. But so the Old Testament, as we say, was uh, the uh, types and shadows of Jesus. Yeah. It was showing us Jesus, mm -hmm. his future coming mm -hmm. because the blood is yeah. powerful. Yeah. So by the written law which was the Ten Commandments the purpose of it is to was to demand perfection from man that man could not keep and I'm telling you today we still try to uphold those Ten Commandments we try to because we pride ourselves on being able to laws that we can keep a form of pride come in because we pride ourselves we're good law abiding the citizens. Mm -hmm. But, yes. Yeah. When I go somewhere and someone say, I ain't never drunk, I ain't never stole nothing. That's right. I've always been obedient to my parents. I've always this, I've always that. What were you saved from? Yeah. If you did all that, you're saying that you're perfect. I, I've, had, I've, I've heard many people say, I don't drink, mm -hmm. I don't cuss, I don't do. But what were you saved from? Mm -hmm. I did a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. And God saved me. Mm -hmm. Even to the point I said, Lord, I ain't nobody. But see, when you've been told you're nobody for, the, for a long time, you take that in. You do and you let that become a part of your life. You do. You but sure when you do. know Jesus, and, and what is the word say? A man will fall seven times, mm -hmm. but each time he gets up. And how many times shall I forgive him? Oh, seven times seven. seven. Times. And so in one day. In one day, that's over 400 times. In one day. <laughs> and we, like you said, we pride ourselves in, oh, I'm a bishop. And, I don't do this and I don't do that. 
I do, I've done, and, and even now, God is still delivering me Amen. from things that are in my mind. I have to still cast down vain imagination that exalt themselves against the works exactly. of God. Yes. I still got to say, be quiet, mouth. Mm. Don't look that way, self. Sometimes she would have to say, because she know I'm getting mad. And she know the bad part, so she have to make sure that I don't get out of character. Mm -hmm. So every last one of us have something need to be worked on. Every last. Something every need to be worked on. A good example. <laughs> yeah, I'll pray for me. So I thought I had told my friends that we leave it. We we're gonna leave yesterday at five thirty. I told Pastor Canty, uh, Dr. Canty, and, and, I, and Cheryl had asked me earlier in the day, what time we leave? And now I said, I'll get back with you. I didn't get back with them. So I went, knocked on the door about five. And Ann knocked on the door. And so here comes Cheryl walking. You didn't tell us so five, five, five. And I said, yes, I did. Yes, I did. But I didn't, because I didn't tell Ann. So I. I went there because at first, you know, I'm the type of person, if I wake up, I'm a jolly, jolly, happy person. I can talk to you. Everybody ain't like me. They be holding on to sleep until it's queer. And so I said, then I had to go back in the room and apologize. Because I didn't tell them. But the good part is, got home for 12 o'clock. <laughs> And to me, if I leave somewhere at noon, it seems like I'm driving all day long. Mm -hmm. So, see, I'm the bishop. And I didn't do what I was supposed to do. So I had to go apologize to them in that same day. Don't, you know, I don't care who you are. Mm -hmm. You still got to follow the same rules that everybody else has to follow. That's right. I don't care. I don't care if you're the boss. That's right. I don't care if you the president, even though we see things going on. Yeah. But if you don't follow the rules, you're going to fall over. So, and I was thinking, I was thinking last night, how I'm going to tell them girls I'm sorry again. <laughs> so, you help me to walk in the door. <laughs> You know, people say, you so nice. No, I'm not all the time. I'm not so nice all the time. And I have my attitudes, my days, though. But if you like me, the Holy Spirit will convict you. And I say to him sometimes, why, why other people can get away with things and I can't get away with nothing? Have y'all ever said that to the Lord? They just sinning and they getting away with stuff. I can't get away with nothing. And my question is, do you ever talk to them about their sin? Of course you do. But it's their choice to do what they want to do. Okay. You forgive her. Thank you. If we didn't say it, and I know I didn't say it. No, I didn't say it. I ain't say you forgive her. I ain't say it by no means necessary. Because we wanted to sleep, and we thought we were going to be sleeping late. And here we hear the knock around five o'clock. I heard the knock, but I ain't paying no attention. I thought maybe Ann them bumped up against the door. Because we had a suite. <laughs> so I didn't move. And that knock came back again. And I said, are they knocking at the door at this time of the morning? And then, and, 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 and Minister Joe said, yeah, why are they knocking? I said, I don't know. So I go and let do that. What is going on with y'all? Oh, we get ready. I mean, she's sitting there halfway dressed. I said, get ready to go where? Oh, we gonna leave at five thirty. That was it. It was, it was on for them. And she swore she told us, and she ain't telling us nothing. I was after uh, wanting to know what kind of time so I could get adjusted. Yeah. Well, this is the first time you hear. Yeah, you're, it's acceptable. It's acceptable. <laughs> 
Mm. I thought we had moved on. Evidently, you didn't move uh, on. I, I guess you needed to hear the word. Okay. Well, I didn't realize it, so I know the next time. <laughs> yes, my dear. We, we, we accept your apology. My sister. Uh, sister Sunday School teacher, when you were talking about. <laughs> 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 No, that's what they say in the Baptist church. So some school teacher. When you were talking about the Ten Commandments yeah. and uh, them being given to try so that Moses could have something to try and direct the people and I guess for lack of a better thing, keep them in line. Mm -hmm. But as we study the, the Old Testament and the foreshadows of Jesus okay. and we come on into the New Testament, we realize that the Old Testament, the people were always, always sin conscious. Mm -hmm. They were always aware of what they couldn't do. And if I did do it, what I had to do, and had to sacrifice this and kill that and do this and do that. Mm -hmm. But when Jesus came, we understand now that we don't have to be sin conscious. We shouldn't sin if it's at all possible, but when we do, we have an advocate. We have the blood, the cover. We are forgiven, mm. past, present, and future. All we have to do is repent. Mm -hmm. and, and that that was something that I, took me a while to learn, mm -hmm. because you cannot, as you said, you can't live up to the perfection of the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. You can try to live by them and not do some of the things that the Ten Commandments say, but there's no perfection. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus. And believe it or not, what you're teaching was on the radio on my way in. The and same, same thing. Isn't that wonderful? Praise God. Because I want to let you know that because of those Ten Commandments that we couldn't keep, Colossians tells us what Jesus did. Let's look at Colossians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. And anyone has it, I'd like to hear a different um, translation. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. And remember, there were two sets of Ten Commandments. The first set, Moses threw down at the people. Amen. He was so angry that they had started building this multi-golden calf that he got mad and threw it down. Mm -hmm. And it crushed it. And then God did a second set of Ten Commandments. But this time, where did he put those commandments? No, in the mercy seat. Mm -hmm. He took those Ten Commandments and placed it in the mercy seat. And along with the other things that were found under the mercy seat. Colossians. It's Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. 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 I'm going to read out of uh, the children Bible. Okay. N I R D. Okay. Uh, you said what verse? Uh, 14. 14 says, and he wiped out the written law with its rule. The law was against us. It opposed us. Mm -hmm. He took away the nail. No, he took away and nailed it to the cross. Do you want to go on? That, that was it. The having wiped out the handwritings of the requirements that was against us. What was the handwriting? It was the Ten Commandments. Wiped them out and did what to it? Nailed it on the cross. It's been nailed to the cross. Saints, we don't have to worry about keeping those things. We don't have to worry about memorizing those things because the Spirit of God that is on the inside of us will help us. The grace of God will help you keep those Ten Commandments where you don't have to keep your mind on it. They've been wiped out, so why are we keeping it alive? It's wiped against us. What version do you have? 
What you, uh huh. What you uh, she said. Well, I didn't have the handwriting of the ordinances that was against us, which was the Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. So I would tell you, if you got Ten Commandments hanging on your wall, you need to take it down. <laughs> it's no longer viable to us because we can live that now through who? Jesus, Jesus Christ. We don't need no memory of that. It's been blotted out, so why are we keeping it alive? Mm -hmm. That's right. When something, when ink falls on something, it really messes it up. You can't even see it, can you? It blots it out. So if Jesus said that I have blotted, I have uh, wiped it out, then we need to do what? breaking something if you if you trust him mm -hmm. he will let you know mm -hmm. he is he will deal with you concerning many things of course the comforter jesus said if i don't go he won't come mm -hmm. so when the holy spirit began to deal with you concerning some of those things that you're breaking the, the 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 laws he didn't get a he didn't do away with them but he let us know that I carried them far away what is it loving me loving he living he loved me mm -hmm. there dying he carried my sin far away so when we read the Ten Commandments okay um uh, when we read the Ten Commandments. And it says, thou shalt not steal. I think every last one of us is guilty of that. Every one of us. Thou shalt not kill. I ain't never shot nobody but your mouth hair. Mm -hmm. All of the commandments. But when we repent, we give God the opportunity to remind us that we're not perfect. Even when he gave the law of divorce. Some say, well, you gave David the law of divorce. Jesus said, I gave it to him because of the hardness of your heart. It was never done so in the beginning. The things that we're, why are you so busy? Can I say something? Why are you so busy trying to watch people make mistakes? You just, you, 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 you come, you just looking for a, folks to follow. When you ought to be praying for them to be lifted up and not fall. And, and, and so the Ten Commandments that the Lord gave when he gave it to Moses, like you say, it was to let them know that Moses was in charge and God had given this to him them. And when Moses broke those Ten Commandments, the last time he had to heal them out. He had to do it himself. So when we start judging people, and I know it's to be true, when you start judging people about things, you will fall by that same thing you judge them by. I'm serious. You will fall by it. How sad it is that what you're saying about how we looking for people to fall, looking for faults, and just, you know, waiting for the hammer to fall. That's the the way that some people think God is, that he's that God just sitting up there waiting for you to do something wrong. That can't be further from the truth. That's right. That is not how God thinks or reacts toward us. God is love. He is. He is. I don't know if I've told this story before, but um, that's just like um, a young lady that I used to live in, Judson, she had a husband, and the husband wouldn't bring her to work. And I sit there and I judged her and I said, I don't know how in the world you sit there and let this man got a car and he won't even bring you to work. What's wrong with you? But then the same thing happened to me. <laughs> So you 
have to be careful when you speak. Because you do, you sit there judging somebody else. The same thing is going to turn around and happen. It may be sooner, it may be later. And I tell you, mine was sooner. I had a car accident, couldn't get no car at the time because my credit was bad. I had to walk to work in the rain the same as she did. Uh -huh. And and I kept saying, you got all them kids there with no with a husband. Why he won't bring you to work? <laughs> and that's exactly right. So we have to be careful how we use our tongue to other people because God will. That's teaching you. It, it's not that God being mean or ugly to you. He teaching you, okay, you spoke the same thing on her. Now I'm gonna let this same thing turn back around on you. She had to walk to work. Let me see how long you gonna have to walk to work. In the rain, in the cold. And I did that for y'all for about three months. And then I ran into this taxi cab driver that I could pay every two weeks to bring me to work until God let me do this thing for me to let me know you need to keep your mouth closed and quit judging folks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we all have did it. It may be yeah. done in a different situation, mm -hmm. but we have done it. Yeah. And that's the reason why I say now to other people, be careful what you say. Mm -hmm. You don't know what that person is going through. You don't know what's going on in that household because you're not in there every day. Amen. So you have to be careful of what you speak and how you speak. And now, my, from that day to this one, mine are, you don't know what those people are going through. Pray for them because we don't know the situation. That's right. I don't care what it is, mm -hmm. if it's a preacher, a teacher, mm -hmm. I don't care what they doing in their life. That is not none of your business. That's, right. That's God's business. Mm -hmm. And we supposed to be as children of God, save people. We supposed to be praying for our sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. Amen. So true. Each individual, God is so awesome that he teaches us because he knows what each one of us need. Right. Now, you you know me. You know me from the past and you knew how I was and you did it too, sure. And I am so thankful, y'all. I'm so thankful how God has brought me because sometimes I think to myself, you ain't changed. You still the same old, same old. That's what the enemy be making me think. But I love to watch game shows, right? Mm -hmm. And let me show you how God can show you that it's still some stuff down in there. Right. And uh, you know how when you think you're so smart and yeah. you know answers and stuff, and they be saying stuff, and you be like, ah, that ain't it. Yeah. And you this and that. That ain't up there like on Family Feud. You out, somebody family. say something, I'll be like, that ain't up there. And then when it be up there, I'll be like, oh, well, I guess you don't know as much as you think you know. <laughs> or right. uh, it, it, you know, just little simple things like that. Mm -hmm. How the Lord teaches, I don't know how he does anybody else. But it's just little things like that he teaches me. And he humbles my spirit. Mm -hmm. And I'm so thankful. Mm -hmm. I'm so thankful for being here. Because if y'all think something's still going on like this somewhere else, it don't. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. No, I believe it. Choose it. And, and another thing is, is when you, <laughs> when you like uh, Sister Francis said, <laughs> When you think you done change and your old way will pop up and you be like, where did it come from? Mm -hmm. Where did that come from? It's like, you know, y'all, I, I was a person, i tell you how I thought and kept on walking. That's, mm -hmm. that's just the way I was. And if you wanted to be my friend afterwards, so be it. If you did, so be it. <laughs> That was just me. You know, that was my personality. But now, I think before I say anything, because, you know, I'd be like, okay, Lord, I don't want to get out of character. So, should I say something or just be that I need to get my mom? <laughs> and most of the time, I kind of say, be quiet. <laughs> be quiet, because... 
these people are looking at you. They want to see if you're going to fall or you're going to say who you are. So sometimes you just have to walk away and shake your head and keep on going <laughs> because you know you and you know God have changed you, but that old man sometimes will come up, especially when people irritate you so much. And, and most of the time now, when I know somebody that's going to irritate me, I stay out of their way. Because that way I keep myself safe. <laughs> and I don't have to repent. <laughs> so I just stay out of the way. So sometimes, you know, God is teaching us through our journey. All the time you don't have to open your mouth. All the time you can just be quiet and let them say whatever they want to say. And then you won't be in fault of nothing. They won't have nothing to go back and say, oh, you know, she thought she said, I thought she said she was a Christian, because that's the first thing they say. Mm -hmm. And then there you are, and then people looking at you sideways. <laughs> but I know me. I'm just that type of person. You know, if you say something to me, I'm going to say it back. I may say it back in a hard way, but I don't mean it that way. It's just that I'm telling you exactly how I feel, and, and I'm done with it. But most people don't do that. They are all a grudge, and you still, you wonder why they still mad. <laughs> and you don't go on, right? <laughs> But your point there brings me to this point, that we can wrongly think our behavior can make us save one day, and then unsaved the next day. Our salvation is based in the finished work of Jesus Christ. He knows we live in the flesh. He knows that. What was changed was our nature. And that blood that flowed upon us Washing away everything, everything from the past to eternity has been forgiven. And we got to know the power of his love. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you an example of uh, Paul. We know about him. He was a killer. People talking about this Jesus. He couldn't stand it. This man had degrees upon degrees. He was high in stature. He was high as far as hierarchy in his government or in his whatever he was in. We know that. Yeah. When Paul got saved and he had that trip to Damascus and he went through his teaching and his learning period of time, Paul got up boldly before the council and told them, I have a good, clear conscience. He was able to say what thus says the Lord with a clear conscience. He wasn't reminded of his sin and his past because when we keep, when we become more sin conscious about what I used to do, how I used to do it, it keeps you from moving forward in what God has you to do. You can't become can't sin conscious all the time. It's always there. Become more Christ conscious. Who you are. Where you've been redeemed from. How you're walking. Don't worry that your behavior does not display always who you are. But that does not remove your salvation. Amen. And many times we think our behavior removes our salvation. Yes. And then we are saying, Jesus, what you did still wasn't strong enough. It wasn't good enough. <laughs> That's a slap in God's face. God, Jesus became the perfect sacrifice Amen. enough for God Amen. to use to say, you are the righteousness of God. 
I have given you my righteousness. Mm -hmm. So declare that as you, as a part of your character. Mm -hmm. Declare that you are a holy nature. Mm -hmm. What nature? I don't feel like I'm holy. Well, holiness has no feelings. Mm -hmm. It is also a gift given by God. Remember, what we do does not change what God has given us. Y'all understand that? Do you understand? If I go out here and cuss sister so-and-so straight out, It may not be a good show, but guess what? It did not change my standing before God. But there's a Holy Spirit in me that will chastise me, yeah, that yeah, will correct yeah, me, yeah, that yeah. will point to yes, me. Yes. I don't need you to tell me. But if I'm not listening to the Holy Spirit, guess what? He's going to get somebody, somebody to bring it to my attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He will do it. But first, he'll start with you. You're going to be the one that's going to know it first before anybody else will. But once you keep ignoring it and act like you were justified by cussing her out, then God said, okay. Since you're not listening to the Holy Spirit who corrects you, who chastises, who directs, who teaches, he does it all on the inside of us. But since you don't listen, he has to go to other means because he's a loving father. That's what we do to our children. When we love our children so much, we correct them. We chastise them. And sometimes they still hard-headed and want to do their own thing. So what do we do? We allow life to show them. And life will definitely show them. There are some battles that's not yours. Right. And you got to know how to pick your battles. Yes. There are battles that's designed by God. He Amen. really wants you to sit, pray, be still, and watch him deliver you out of it. That's right. Because he is changing you. He's working on the inside of you. Amen. So when he's telling you to be quiet, that's what he's working on the inside of you. There's some things in us that still need to be cut out. Amen. Still need to be worked on. And they'll be worked on when you are obedient to what he says. Move, stop, slow down, go right, go left, be quiet, be still, and know that I am God. Our salvation is based in the finished work of Jesus. That cross is powerful. Know that that cross nailed every handwritten law against us. It nailed every sickness against us, every disease, everything the devil has brought. Jesus nailed it to the cross. That cross is powerful. It is powerful. It supersedes everything that the devil ever can bring against us. Amen. But we got to know that. You got to know that you're loved, church. When you have a doubt that God loves you, it opens up the door for guilt, shame, condemnation. It opens up the door for sicknesses. When you do not know how much you are loved, what could be the greatest sin you can do? What is the greatest sin? I don't know what the greatest sin is. But we have levels of sin that we feel that God cannot forgive me. But it is the devil that's making you think that God won't forgive you. Because it's too great of a sin, you're not worthy of that forgiveness. So know that sense that the power of the cross that Jesus did supersedes it 
all. It is not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. That comes from Titus 3, 5. We were made to be the righteousness of God and to declare that beauty of the cross. Know that your behavior does not always line up, but it never causes you to lose your salvation. Know that you are loved. Know that you are loved. Know that you are forgiven. Believe that. Don't believe the bait of the devil. Keep your mind on Jesus. Don't be conscious of your sins. Because your sins will come and they go. And you'll sin almost every day. But when God says when you have the, uh, when you have a clear understanding of how much you are really loved by God, sin has no dominion over you. It has no power. It has no hold upon your life. Those things that easily trip you up, they have no power. But they have power when you don't have that assurance that I am loved by God. That the grace of the cross of Jesus really have delivered me from this. And I'm telling you, when your right believing lines up, you will live right. And you will live in the way that it is effortlessly not forced upon you. You're just walking in it. You're just walking in it. And those things that easily tripped you over will no longer be able to trip you again. And I know it is time for us to go. <laughs> oh, but I sure want to bring out one more point. And then I will uh, uh, let what's next comes um, forth. Um, what matters now is our belief. If you believe wrong, you will live wrong. And wrong thinking about the power of the Christ will lead you to defeat and discouragement, fears and guilt. Right believing will transform your life. Jesus was the perfect sacrifice for our sins for all time and nothing more is needed. Sin is now a non-issue with God but the devil keeps trying to throw it in our faces. The enemy's only hope is to make us so sin conscious that uh, so sin conscious they will have, have problems believing that we are truly, truly saved. And saints of God, I want to end uh, by saying this today. You are truly, truly loved. You are truly, truly forgiven. And you need to walk in that forgiveness. When you trip, when you fall, keep moving forward. And say, Jesus, I thank you. Uh, by the blood of Jesus, you made provision. I'm forgiven for that. I'm forgiven. And keep it moving. But don't let it linger because it's going to hold you back. May God add a blessing to the hearing of his word and teaching. Is there anything else I need to do or say? Anybody else have any comments they'd like to make? Well, that's very simple. Uh, good lesson this morning. But like you say, until we come to the